She's the prettiest woman in town, but she works the most humble job, and men are willing to pay money for her. But even if they were very rich, they would never see her. The woman's name is Angel, and she's the child of a tragic mistress. Her father only visits her and her mother occasionally. She longed for her father's love, but he didn't care about them. One day, he abandoned them and threw them off the estate. Mother had to sell her jewelry to make ends meet. But it wasn't enough. The pawnbroker hinted that she could do something else. She made sex with one man after another, and eventually fell ill and died. Angel lived alone, but was pulled into the abyss by a man at the age of eight. She entered a brothel. The mistress couldn't bear to see her go astray at such a young age, so she put her to work doing odd jobs. But the owner, Duke, had other plans. He wanted to raise Angel from a young age and make her his money maker when she grew up. After a few years, Angel grew up to be a beautiful girl, and the first customer Duke arranged for her was her own father. That night, Angel sat her day down on the floor in agony, resentful of her father. She told him the truth, and in shame, he shot himself. Mrs. Duke, a kind-hearted woman, tells Angel to run away, but she is killed by Duke. Angel gets on a ship to California where she uses her body to earn enough money. She thinks she can start a new life, but she is robbed of her money as soon as she gets off the ship. She is taken in by the mistress of the town's palace, and in return she has to work for her. She is numb to men, none of them were true to her, they were only interested in her beauty. But there was one man who was different, his name was Michael, and it was a brave, hard-working man who ran his own farm and cared for the land under his feet. His only joy in the day was watching the sunset with his dog, and it felt a little lonely. He was thankful for everything and thought, it was a gift from God. One day he prayed that God would grant him a soulmate, and his wish soon came true. Michael was in town shopping when he saw Angel. He couldn't take his eyes off her. He decided that Angel was his true love. He learned it from others that Angel had a menial job, but he didn't mind. After paying double the price, he got the chance to talk to Angel. Angel looked at the young man with curiosity. He looks like it's his first time in a place like this, and he's overwhelmed and even a little shy. Michael said that he was not going to do anything, and that his only reason for being here was to marry Angel. Angel was not impressed. This was the fifth proposal she had received this week, and she didn't believe the men. The woman works her magic in bed, but the men don't budge. She began to seduce men. He smiles and refuses. The man can help himself, so he walks out of the room and rushes to the pond to suppress his desire with cold water. The woman hides and laughs. This man is different. Michael is determined to make Angel his wife, but he won't force her. What he wanted was for Angel to fall in love with him, so he spent more money every day to come to Angel's room and talk to her. He said every time that he would take her away from here. Angel just thought he was naive and didn't give a damn. She even asked her sisters to take Michael away from her, but she underestimated Michael's determination. Michael rushed to Angel's room and asked her if she would be happy here for the rest of her life. Angel can't answer. She wants to see the outside world and live a simple life. Her heart was touched by Michael. She went to the owner and wanted to take all the money she had earned and leave. But when the boss heard Angel say she wanted to leave, she was very cold. She called her men to beat Angel up. By the time Michael arrived, Angel was lying on the bed, bruised and battered. Michael looks at Angel with pain in his heart and asks her to marry him again. And this time she agrees. She was taken back to the farm by Michael. But what Michael didn't expect was for Angel to give the ring back to her. Angel just wanted to get out of the brothel's grasp. She didn't want to marry Michael. When she recovered from her injuries, she left the room while Michael was out and tried to return to town. Michael found out and rode after her. Michael doesn't want to force Angel back. He hands Angel a canteen of water and a coat, worried that she will be cold on the journey, and lets her choose her future. Angel's experiences as a child have made her very sensitive. She had always thought that Michael, like all other men, was just obsessed with her body. Suddenly she realizes that this man really loves her. Angel chose to live with him and was blessed with hard-earned happiness. Michael washed Angel's feet, taught her how to pick eggs for the chickens, and fished and chopped wood. They did all the things that make life interesting. Angel is so grateful to Michael that the only way she can repay him is with her body. But Michael refuses. Early one morning, Michael took Angel to the top of the mountain. Looking at the sky, Angel seemed to realize that she was really in love with Michael. She began to reveal her true feelings, and Michael had been waiting for this moment for a long time. He didn't want Angel to be grateful. He wanted her love. Woman moaned in agony in the water, scrubbing every inch of her skin with a rock. She felt herself dirty. She's the kind of woman that man can get for just a little bit of money. 
Since Angel faced up to her feelings, she and Michael became a real couple, but the shadow of Duke was still with her. Once she accidentally got pregnant, Duke aborted her baby and said she would never get pregnant again. Angel didn't want to drag Michael down. She returns to the city while Michael is away, only to find that the brothel has disappeared, burned to the ground in an accident. In order to survive, Angel has to enter a new brothel to make money. When Michael finds out, he rushes to find Angel. Michael beat the crowd. Instead of abandoning Angel, he rescued her from the abyss. That night Michael cries in the stables. Angel knew she had hurt Michael's heart. She runs to the pond to wash away her sins. And Michael stops her and forgives her. They open their hearts completely. Angel tried to be a good wife. But her ordinary life was always interrupted. One day on the road, a family's carriage is pregnant and the lady of the house is about to give birth. Angel took the family home until the birth of the woman's child. Angel didn't want to drag Michael down with her. Looking at Michael's happy smile while holding the baby, she felt more and more that she was not worthy of Michael. She could not give Michael the child he wanted, so she took Michael to the top of the mountain and said goodbye to him in the last council moment. She quietly left again, leaving the ring behind, and this time Michael didn't go after her. He wanted to give Angel the right to choose. Angel comes to town and meets Duke, who has opened a new brothel. He's got Angel under his thumb again, and he wants her to perform on stage at night. Angel is about to repeat her old life, and she's not willing to comply. She stands on stage, and she boldly tells the story of the bad things Duke has done. The audience is shocked, and Duke comes on stage to tell everyone that she's lying. He took Angel to his room and tried to kill her. A man came out to protect her. During the chaos, Angel rescued other little girls who were being held by Duke. When people saw that children was really working for Duke, they stood up and shouted, Hang Duke. Angel escapes and the villain is finally punished. Angel went to a women's shelter to spend the rest of her life. Michael's brother-in-law sees Angel by chance. He immediately finds Angel and tells her that Michael has been waiting for her. Angel is hesitant. Her inability to have children is a thorn in her side. But in the end, she stands up to Michael. Michael finally waits for Angel to make a choice. And they still have their own child. This is the end of the movie. This movie is adapted from Francine Reaver's novel of the same name. People always judge things based on their own perceptions. Angel doesn't believe in Michael's sincerity, nor does she believe that she can still have true love. In that cheesy world, there seems to be no answer to what true love looks like. That's why people fill the void in various ways. There are many people who interpret impulsive sexual desire as love for others. Angel's transformation is also a process of self-redemption. She was constantly self-destructive, but the good news is that she finally overcame her past hurts and obeyed her heart. Michael accepted her for who she was and forgave her for her fall. True love takes shape when we learn to love others with all our heart.